So we have been looking at second order differential equations linear and with constant coefficients. So we saw how the solution of the inhomogeneous differential equation is connected to the solution of the homogeneous differential equation. So the key ingredient which we extra ingredient which we needed when we have an inhomogeneous differential equation is to be able to find some one particular solution. If you can find a particular solution you can just add it to the complementary function and you are done. Right? So in this lecture we will look at how, how to find a particular solution for certain special kinds of inhomogeneous forcing terms. Right? So that is the subject matter for this lecture. Okay, so we are looking at, at a differential equation of this kind a2 second derivative of y plus a1 first derivative of y with respect to x plus a0 y is equal to there is a forcing function on the right hand side. Right? If we can somehow find a particular solution for this differential equation we already know how to solve the homogeneous equation the corresponding homogeneous equation and extract the complementary function we can just add the two and we are done. Right? So one way to get get to a particular solution is to just do you know do an inspection. So let us look at some examples where you know this inspection will work and that will give us some hints for how to go about it for certain you know a class of fairly big class of forcing functions and a useful class of forcing functions. So suppose we are given a differential equation like this right. So we see that the right hand side is just a constant right. So this is you know only marginally more difficult than if you had the right hand side to be 0 right you it is just it is a constant on the right hand side. So a little bit of thought reveals that you see you have a first derivative and a second derivative right both of these will just be 0 if you choose your function itself to be a constant right and then it is just a matter of choosing the right constant so that you know it is just this must hold right so indeed that is that is the right way. Right, so we just choose yp is equal to a constant and then a little more thought here you know tells us that that constant must be actually for this particular example 3 by 5 right. So 3 by 5 times 5 is just 3. These guys do not matter because you know first derivative and second derivative of a constant will be just 0. So then it is simply a matter of you know it is like a shift of your homogeneous differential equation solution. You find the solution and then add 3 by 5 and you are done right. Okay, so this is straightforward. Now, what about this? So let's look at this differential equation where we have an exponential of x which appears on the right hand side, right? So this is an important class of problems. Whenever you have some exponential of x or you know x in general exponential of some factor times x, you know, with an overall factor outside, or you can have you know sums of these that that's more you know complicated variants of this can be constructed. We will look at those a little bit later but if we look at this differential equation then we have so we see that okay now if we choose a constant it is not going to work out right but some thought reveals that maybe if we choose a function of the form e to the x right because we have e to the x and when we take first derivative again you will get back e to the x and then a second derivative also will give you e to the x. So if we just choose e to the x and with a factor along with it, it should work out and indeed this is borne out to be true. So let us try yp is equal to c times e to the x. So the first derivative is just c times e to the x, second derivative is also c times e to the x. So we must, we will get 1 minus 2 minus 3. So it is 1 minus, so it is minus 4 times c must be equal to minus 5. So if you choose c to be 5 by 4 or if you choose yp is equal to 5 by 4 times e to the x that is going to be a particular solution for this problem right. So particular solution here means full solution for the problem because we know how to solve the homogeneous equation okay. So this works out fine. So the question is is this you know general enough right. Suppose we have a function of the form e to the some constant times x will we be able to find a suitable constant times e to the same power you know times x and will we will it work out. So let us look at another example. So you how to see if this is you know in fact as general as we would like it to be. So suppose I in this example I have the same left hand side d squared y by dx squared minus 2 dy by dx minus 3y but on the right hand side instead of minus 5 times e to the x I am going to change this to minus 5 times e to the minus x. So let us see now whether 
the same approach will hold. So what did we do? So we might guess that now we should try by a particular solution of the form constant times e to the minus x, right? That's a reasonable, you know, guess. So if we plug this in, then we see that the left hand side becomes, you know, second derivative, you'll have a minus sign times minus sign, that's going to be remain a positive sign. So it's c times e to the minus x, so times 1, but this first derivative will give you a minus sign. So it becomes 1 plus 2, and then you have minus 3, you know, overall, it's just c times e to the minus x I have pulled out. So then I see that this coefficient is 1 plus 2 minus 3, which is 0, right? If it goes to 0, then there is no way that I can choose my c and demand that the right hand side must go to minus 5 times e to the minus x, right? So how did the previous method work? It worked because, you know, this coefficient were some other number other than 0. Then I had to just choose my c times this number should be equal to minus 5 and then I, I was done. But now if this, this number is going to 0, then there is no way that I can choose my c such that overall it must give me minus 5 times e to the minus x, right? So this is a problem. So we see that apparently this method is not quite general. So what went wrong, right? So we will see to examine, you know, uh, if we examine the roots of the auxiliary equation, we will find an answer for this question. So let's look at the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. What is the homogeneous e differential equation? It is this guy, the left hand side is equal to zero. But the left hand side can be factored, right, as d plus one times d minus one, d minus two times y equal to zero. So the roots of this auxiliary equation are minus one and plus two. Therefore, the complementary function is, you know, given by, you know, these two are the linearly independent solutions, e to the minus x and e to the two x. So now we see the crux of the issue is that e to the minus x is what appears on the right hand side. So in fact, one of the solutions of your homogeneous equation is your forcing function. So whenever this happens, it's a problem. You cannot blindly, you know, find a particular solution of this form. So you must try an alternate form, which in this case is actually just uh, x times e to the minus x, right, so times some co constant to be determined, right. So let us see if this will work out. If we plug in c times x times e to the minus x, now what happens? We have the second derivative minus 2 times the first derivative minus 3 times y is equal to now we have two kinds of terms. One term is c x times e to the minus x, right, where, you know, if you take the derivative uh, only with respect to this e to the minus x, in all, at all levels, so you get 1 plus 2 minus 3. So this part will in fact go to 0. But then you have another term plus, you know, first time you take a derivative, so you take a derivative with respect to x, so you have c times e to the minus x, then you take another derivative and you get a minus 1. So you have a minus 1 minus 2, right? So if you do this, um, so, you, so you get a uh, E, c times e to the minus x times minus 1 minus 2. So in fact, you have a minus 3c times e to the minus x. So it's not going to go to 0 now anymore, but you'll get minus 3 times c times e to the minus x. So now we can choose minus 3c to be minus 5. And so if you choose your yp to be 5 by 3 times x times e to the minus x, we can check, you can check it again, that it all, it all works out nicely. And in, indeed, we have managed to find a particular solution for this problem, right? So what we have been doing is, is an example of a general method called a method of undetermined coefficients, right? So which can solve for, you know, fairly a wide variety and useful variety of forcing functions, right? So that's what we will describe here. So if whenever you have an exponential right hand side, like we, we already looked at, so the method is, you know, you first of all, write down the left hand side, you factorize it, d minus a times d minus b times y. So may, these methods, you know, carry through for even higher order differential equations, right? For, for our purposes, let's just concentrate on second order differential equations. But, you know, there is a ready generalization available to even higher order problems. Okay, so if you have d minus a times d minus b times y is equal to k times e to the cx. So the key point now is, to find out the relationship between the c and a and b, right? If c is equal to neither a nor b, then it's super simple. That's the first type of problem that we looked at. So then you're guaranteed that you will have a particular solution of this form, some coefficient 
times e to the c x right is a solution of this problem. Now, if c is equal to one of these two, c is equal to a or b and a not equal to b, then that is the second type of problem which we just checked out. So, then you are guaranteed to be able to find a particular solution of this form c x is equal to e to the c x. And there is also a third case which is if you know you have repeated roots and your c is equal to the repeated root, then you can you can you know cook up an example of that kind and verify that in fact even x times e to the c x will fail. Then you have to go to one more you know higher order in the polynomial. So, you get c times x squared e to the c x for sure you, you will be able to find a sol particular solution of this form right. So, this is when you have the exponent uh, the right hand side being an exponential right. So, another you know closely related right hand side is if you have a sinusoidal right hand side instead of an exponential. So, so you have a scenario where d minus a times d minus b acting on y is some k times sine of alpha x or k times cosine of alpha x. So, this is seen to be straightforward. So, what you do is you write you know you look at the solution for this problem d minus a times d minus b times y is equal to k times e to the i alpha x right. So, so here in fact, so, so the c uh, uh, can be complex as well right. It can be you know that is that is the scenario that I am looking at here. So, i times alpha times x and then you just solve for this problem right. So, a and b in general have we have seen can be also complex numbers. If they are complex because they are you know roots of a quadratic equation they are going to be conjugate to each other. So, in this case you have to you know you know the same kind of conditions will hold and you just solve for this problem and then what happens is you just take the real part or the imaginary part depending upon which of these problems are of interest. So, you see that d minus a times d minus b acting on some real part plus i times imaginary part is equal to k times real part plus you know k times imaginary part. So, if you take the real part and imaginary part you know separately you can find the solutions for each of these kinds of right hand side right. So, this is very very closely related to this type of a problem. So, it is best understood with the help of you know an example. So, which you will you'll find homework on this right. So, where you will work this out and convince yourself that this indeed holds. So, let us look write down. So, in fact, the method of undetermined coefficients is some more uh, there is some more generality to this. In fact, you can you know look for a solution for this general differential equation. You have a d minus a times d minus b acting on y is equal to some e to the c times x times some polynomial of x. You can have a polynomial also of x on the right hand side and where p n of x is a polynomial of degree n. So, in this scenario it turns out that if you choose a particular solution of this form, again all you have to do is first of all check the relationship between c and a and b right. The polynomial is a separate thing by itself. So, you must make a guess of this form e to the c x times some polynomial of the same degree right. So, it is an nth degree polynomial. So, there will be n unknown coefficient you have to match those coefficients that is why it is called the method of undetermined coefficients. So, e, but the key point is that you are guaranteed to be able to find a particular solution of this form. It is just a matter of you know plugging this form in into the differential equation and finding all the coefficients which are unknown right. That is why it is called undetermined coefficients. They can be determined you know and if c is if c is not equal to either a or b it is of this form, but if c is equal to one of the two a or b and a is not equal to b then again you will get this x times e to the c x. So, now instead of a constant you have a whole polynomial right. So, the, this constant also gets absorbed inside this polynomial which itself needs to be determined. So, the key is that this polynomial has the same degree as the polynomial which appears on the right hand side in the original inhomogeneous differential equation. And then when if c equal to a equal to b then you have x square times e to the c x times q n of x right. If you make this as your onslaught you will be able to determine the coefficients you know which are unknown and you will have a particular solution for this type of a problem. Ok, let us look at one example where so I have here d squared y by dx squared plus dy by dx minus 2y is equal to x squared minus x. So, I do not have any exponential here I have purely a, a quadratic term on the right hand side. So, using this prescription I will look for a particular solution 
So I first of all write, write this down as d plus 2 times d minus y 1 times y is equal to x squared minus x. So I have just factorized to the left hand side. And then we make an onsort which is a quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b and c are these undetermined coefficients. So now the derivative of this is going to be 2a x plus b and the second derivative is just 2a. So if I, I must arrange the coefficient such that you know if I subtract, uh, if I add these two and subtract 2 times yp, it must give me x squared minus x. So I must have 2a plus 2ax plus b minus 2ax squared minus 2bx minus 2c. This entire thing must equal equal x squared minus x. So the key point here is that you know these two expressions are equal for all values of x, right? So this is a pretty strong condition. So what it means is it forces you know equality term by term. So the constant on the left hand side is equal to the constant on the right hand side. The first order term on the left hand side is equal to first order term, second order term on the left hand side equal to second order term on the right hand side. So that's why you get many equations. Although there is just one equation, it's actually it contains many uh, equations, it contains three equations in this case. So, so you have minus 2a which is the coefficient of uh, you know x squared on the left hand side it must be equal to 1 which is 1 on the right hand side and then you have 2a minus 2b which acts on x so that must be equal to minus 1 and then 2a plus b minus 2c which is a constant term on the left hand side there is no constant term on the right hand side so that must be equal to 0. Right? If you solve for this so you have three unknowns and three equations and you can solve for them. In this case, you get a equal to minus a half, b equal to zero, c equal to minus a half. So you can use all this information and then write down the particular solution in this problem, which is just minus x squared plus one by two. You can go back and plug this. In fact, you should go back once you have found the solution and plug this back directly into this differential equation and verify that indeed this is a solution of the original differential equation. So once you have a particular solution, the full general solution can be written down as we have seen. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you.